Hi everyone and welcome to episode number 12 of our Configmas this season. This is the grand final, the last day of our 12 days of Christmas. And uh, today you will learn about a topic that is very dear to my heart. But I feel that something is missing. Oh yeah, much better. My name is Johan. And in this session, you will learn about adding tools to your WinPE boot images in Config Manager and some other tricks on how to speed up that process. And that means, of course, it's demo time. Once again, this is the Config Manager environment I've been using for most of the demos here. I have a boot image, Zero Touch WinP11. This is my main boot image that I'm using for most of my sequences. Native to Config Manager, if I do properties on a boot image, go to the customization option. I do have some basic options to add a custom background image and add in some pre-start commands if needed, etc. But if I wanted to do more than that, I typically have to do changes directly to the boot image. And now you have a few options for this. First, you can go over to a bit of PowerShell. I have specify a mount folder and I have specified location of the WIM file that is my boot image. So if I go ahead and mount that image and go over to that folder, now you can see the content inside of that mounted WIM file. And I have already created a folder to which I've added some scripts I was playing around with them earlier. But here you can add files, you can create folders, whatever you need. And when you're done with your changes, you will go ahead and dismount that boot image. If you want to save them, you save the changes. In this case, I simply want to discard them. So I'm going to run a discard command. And none of my changes were saved. But say that I've actually added some files and I did, instead of discard the changes, I did save the changes. Then I would have to update that boot image, right click and update DP. I have to wait until it's distributed. I would have to generate the new boot media if I'm using a boot media, and then I can finally test what I'm working on. Now, this process is obviously quite time consuming. And if you are testing a lot of different changes, this is not the most efficient way of updating a boot image or making changes to it. It's way easier to do it directly on the host. Simply mount the ISO, get the boot image, make the changes, compile a new ISO, and try it out. Because with that, you can do it very, very quickly. You don't have to wait for any content distribution or updating or anything like that. So what I have here is a folder to which I have downloaded the boot media generated out of Config Manager. So I have a boot image.iso. If I want to make changes to this one for testing, I can go ahead and open up a PowerShell prompt, or VS Code in this case. I had a script that I'm using, and the name kind of indicates what it's all about. Add files to the boot image and create a new ISO. In the beginning of the script, I have some variables. Basically, where do I have my working folders? Where do I have my boot image? Where do I have my new boot image? Where is my mount path? and where is the tool from the ADK that can help me create a new ISO file. And some basic validations here in the beginning. So if I run these commands here, I can now go ahead and mount that boot image, copy the content out of it, dismount the ISO, remove the read-only attribute on the WIM file, and then mount the actual boot image. So I'm shorthand extracting and mounting the WinPE that is inside of that ISO that Config Manager created for me. So I'm going to head and run this. And now I have a mount folder. This is the mounted WIM file, same as we looked at on the server, but obviously it contains a little bit more since it's a generated boot media. But I can add more stuff here. I can create a tools folder. And if I want to add a tool, for example, um, zoom it, useful for demos or for taking a screenshot in WinP. So if I go to my downloads folder, sys internals, 
go to the suite, get the 64-bit version of Sumit, paste that in the folder. I have made some changes. Now I'm going to head and close all my Explorer windows. Wim images can be a little bit sensitive to open file handles. And now I'm going to head and dismount the changes. I will commit them and I will generate a new boot image. Isofun. Now I have an ISO file with my changes. I can take an empty virtual machine and I can make sure to mount it on that ISO that was created. It was my boot image test ISO and I will boot it up. So my boot image is started. I'm pressing F8 to get a command prompt. If I go to the root of my X drive, sure enough, here I have the tools folder that I added. You see Summit is right here. I can run it, accept the license agreement, close it out. Now I can do markups in WinPE. I can do zooming in WinPE. And when it's active, I can press Control S to save a screenshot. I'm gonna save it on my X drive, image from WinPE. Now, when working with WinPE this way, it's often quite useful to simply connect to a network share, to download additional scripts, additional tools, you can play around and test them without having to rebuild the ISO all the time. So I'm gonna do a regular net use, up to my server share, connect with the user, a password, And now I can copy down additional scripts, verify that they work. I can copy down additional tools and verify that they work. But what if you want to test and edit scripts directly in here instead of on the server side? Well, it turns out there are a lot of tools that actually work in WinPE. PowerShell Ice does not work, but Notepad++ does. And it may not be the greatest editor, but in terms of editing, for example, a PowerShell script, it beats the normal Notepad by far. So here I have in my setup folder, I have a folder with portable applications. And one of those applications is Notepad++, the portable version that you can download from the Notepad++ web page. And I will copy that over to my host, tools folder, Notepad++, recursive, and create folders. Now, if I go to that folder, I can run Notepad++. But what you often find with tools that you run in WinP is that they're often a little bit more limited than they are in full Windows. For example, in Notepad++, file open won't work because there are components missing in WinP for that. But you can run Notepad++ and specify a script like this one here from Johan Scrivelius. And it will detect it's a PowerShell script to get some basic syntax highlighting, and it still beats the normal notepad if you need to make a change. But other than that, you can start, of course, PowerShell. I can spell PowerShell, you can start PowerShell. And you can run your tests, you can verify your scripts, make sure they work, etc. And when you have done all those testing, all those changes, you copy the result back up to the server. You will, of course, then mount the boot image, update the distribution points. But now you have saved a lot of time simply by being able to do these changes, these testings on the fly, working with the boot image. Now I do have an uh, older blog post. WinP tools where I made a quick list a few years back on common tools that you can add to your boot image. And here's the Notepad++ example. If you have any ideas and tips and tricks on tools that can be included in this blog post, please reach out and I'll be happy to add them. Other than that, this concludes this demo. And as usual, I will share these scripts on the GitHub repository. You'll find the link here in the description below. 
That means that we are done for today and for this config mass season. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have any ideas or content that we can add to this channel, don't hesitate to reach out. Other than that, I wish you a happy 2024 and have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much. Bye for now.